Welcome to Biohacking with Brittany, a podcast focused on holistic health, nutrition, biohacking, and more. I'm your host, Brittany Ford, registered holistic nutritionist and self-proclaimed biohacker. During the last 10 years, I've focused on healing my gut and hormonal issues through lifestyle changes, nutrition, and of course, biohacks. And now I teach others to do the same. I'm so excited you're joining me today. So let's dive right in. Welcome to another episode of Biohacking with Brittany. Um, I just wanted to click record and get this conversation going with my friend um, right away. Amira, uh, we were just talking about social media and knowing each other from Instagram. Um, She is also a holistic nutritionist and she works with adults and children. um, And her practice is called Nutrition Blooms, which I love that name. Um, But yeah, you were just saying like you started your social media journey kind of like similar time to my to myself. Yes, uh, in 2017, I started my Instagram account and I found an even bigger passion for nutrition and photography and helping wellness mm-hmm. brands expand. And I just felt like I, I found a community that was working towards the same goals that I was, which was to inform the public about the knowledge that I had and, and mm-hmm. what I went through in my, in my healing journey. And I came across your page and I knew nothing about biohacking. Um, <laughs> so your page was one of the first that introduced me to that topic. And I realized, you know what, this is in my soul. So I had to keep following and you've done such a great job in introducing so many new health products and ideas. So I yeah. appreciate that. Awesome. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, I. that's so like crazy that we connected so many years ago. Like I started my Instagram account, I think in like early 2018. Um, and I don't like remember us connecting back then, but now like I always see your posts and like, we're always commenting, always DMing. So it's really nice to like have you on the podcast and talk to you. Uh, not, not face to face, but like a step closer. (laughs) Yeah. I really appreciate this conversation today. It, I always feel like the need to talk about my wellness journey and Mm. why I started what I'm doing today and why I have the passion that I have for it. So I really appreciate being here and having this conversation with you and being able to share that. Oh, you're so sweet. Um, Okay. So why don't you tell us about like how, how you got started and how you got into it in the first place? Yeah, so I began my career in optimal nutrition and health after pursuing my own healing journey. And ever since I was young, I would complain to my doctors and I would go to several doctors and say, I'm so tired, like I cannot get out of bed. Um, I can't socialize. Like there must be something wrong. I I didn't want to go to school at all. And my parents were just like, you know, you, you, you don't have to worry, just you don't have to socialize, just go to school. And I just didn't understand what was wrong. I'm like, there had to be something wrong. Um, so I also had irregular menstrual cycles. And I would always hear the same answers. Your blood results are fine. There's nothing wrong. Um, and if you want to regulate your hormones, the only option are, is birth control pills. So being really young and having no experience in the health industry at all. Um, I think health and nutrition was my least favorite topic at the time. (laughs) Um, I did follow the advice of my doctor and I went on birth control pills. And I didn't really like the side effects. I um, decided that this wasn't for me anymore. So when I got off, it took me a while to get my period back and I was offered ovulation pills but at this point, I was a little older. I did research and I said, you know what, I'm I'm not, I don't like the side effects in these pills. So I I'm, I'm need to take a different route. So I found a holistic doctor. Um, she told me what I wanted to hear. Not that I wanted to hear it like I desired it, but I just needed to know something was wrong. Mm. She tested my iodine, my magnesium, my thyroid, my hormones. All of those were low. Um, and she tested some hormones, thyroid hormones that are not usually tested. Um, usually, usually it's just 
S H. Mm-hmm. And if that's fine, then everything else is fine. But to her, that wasn't. So what happened was she offered thyroid medication. I said, no, let's do this through diet, exercise, and having my adrenal glands. Mm. So I did all of that. And I started to feel the way that I was supposed to be feeling my whole life. I felt like I was thriving. I was energetic. And I just felt like I had motivation to get my life started. And through there, I found a passion in trying to deliver this same message and let people know that there is hope out there if you're feeling the way that I do um, and that there's something we can do with about it. And nutrition plays a huge role. So I want to give back to my community as a nutritionist. And I just want to give back in terms of what I experienced. I want to give that to my community. Yeah. Yeah. I find that so interesting. Um, as someone who's kind of like had very similar concerns as yourself, um, and gone down the, the path of, you know, asking for tests and not getting them and having to go to somebody else. And especially in Canada, I think it might, it might be better in the States. Like, I'm not quite sure, but in Canada, you really have to find people who think the same way that you do. Um, and you have to do the work into finding those people. There's so many doctors out there who are just like, look at you like you're crazy if you say, hey, like I want to test my thyroid and TSH is actually not enough. Like I want T4 and T3 and reverse T4 and reverse T3 done. And they're like, look at you like you're crazy. Like, so it takes a lot of time and effort and you have to know what you're talking about too when you go and ask, ask like doctors for these specific tests. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I had to go to a private clinic. Mm. And so that was the only way that I could get, well, even just even discover that I had to get that tested. Yeah. Yeah. And so you started taking iodine and, you know, like to support your thyroid. Do you still take it or do you take anything else to support it? So I had low iodine, which was found through urine. And she told me I could, the, the doctor told me that I could just take um, a thyroid supplement and she suggested a few. So they had iodine, but they also had um, other minerals in there that would support my thyroid. So I did that, but she also insisted that supporting the adrenal glands was a really important step. So I also mm-hmm. took adrenal adaptogens. Mm-hmm. Um, I took herbs like uh, rhodiola and ashwagandha. And th- I think that really made one of the biggest impacts in my life. I immediately felt energy. Um, wow. wow. Also, vitamin C made a very huge difference for me mm-hmm. uh, for adrenal health. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've I've played with adaptogens quite a bit, um, but haven't found that they've made that big of a difference for me. But I think it really depends on the person and, and depends on the quality and the ones that you're taking. Yes, exactly. Um, the ones that I did take were backed by studies mm. and have been tested over and over again. Cool. Cool. Um, and so where you're at right now, do you still need like this much support or do you feel like you've really like optimized those glands for yourself? I think that my hormonal, uh, system is really sensitive, which we all, that everyone has a sensitive, um, endocrine system for sure. We are exposed to like certain toxins in our environment that, can cause disruption very easily. But for me, it happens like very easily. And if I'm not on track with my nutrition, my sleep, Mm. my um, diet, and my stress levels all together, I do feel that sometimes I I go a little backwards in terms of um, where I heal, like sort of healed myself. I feel like I could just go a little bit backwards, but not entirely to where I used to be. So mm-hmm. I'm still feeling that energy. I'm still feeling the best that I I ever felt in my life. Um, I even started getting great, like better grades. And so because of that, like I just feel like I'm in a place where I cannot go back to where I was because I just know so much better. And my body has like evolved to that better state. 
That's awesome. That's very like biohacky of you. Um, <laughs> See, to, I told like, you I had the soul of a biohacker. Yeah, <laughs> like sleep, stress, optimization. It's like very biohacking. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that. That's – yeah, and that's awesome. Like I'm just so happy that your health has come so far because um, – I understand and like so many people listening understand how hard it can be um, when you're in the thick of the health journey, right? Yes. And you're tired and like you've tried so many things and you've talked to so many experts and nothing is working and you're just like, ugh, like I get it. <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing about holistic nutrition and holistic health and biohacking is that it's all about consistency and lifestyle changes and you have to yes. come in with the mindset of being patient and I find a lot of people um, who start off in in this space are like you know what I it's been a week and I need to try conventional medicine again because we're so reliant on a system that uses medications that have active ingredients and so we're so used to that immediate effect um, and it takes a lot of training and education and understanding um, to really go through a great healing journey mm -hmm. and reach that end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a week. That's hilarious. <laughs> my, um, my gut health journey, my first gut health journey that got me into biohacking and into health, like when I was 16, it took me probably two and a half years to heal my gut. Um, and then right now, like my hormone journey of like regulating my cycle, it's like 2021 and I started really focusing on this in 2019. Like it takes a long time. A very long time like, for hormones. Yeah. Yeah. Like I wish it was, I wish it was very easy and like there's like this magic pill or whatever, but like even as a biohacker and someone who's so aware of everything that impacts my health, like it's the consistency. It's like the seasons we go through, it's life, there's a pandemic, you know, like all of these things impact it, right? Like the stress and, and it just takes time. And a lot of, a lot of people don't want to hear that, but unfortunately, like it just takes time. But that, but that is what will leave the lasting results is mm -hmm. all that patience that you had during this healing journey, mm -hmm. because just like it takes time for your body to become ill, it takes time for your body to bring, regain that health again. Um, yeah. It took me about a year to mm -hmm. rebalance my hormones. And it took me, I think, about three months to get my thyroid back on track. Yeah, good. And one of the best things that I did for my hormones, like I actually started producing more estrogen and more progesterone, which I was low in in my past, mm -hmm. was taking probiotic. It actually worked better than birth control pills. Whoa, really? Yeah. And I was like, I just wanted to like go out there and be like to everyone, does anyone else go through this? Like, did anyone else experience this? Because this is like almost a miracle to me. Like, how is, how are these probiotics mm. doing this? And was it like my gut health mm. all this time that was impacting my hormones or making them too low? Um, I don't know. It could have been my thyroid. It could have been my digestive health. That is so interesting. So yeah. you tested your estrogen and then you started taking probiotics and then you tested your estrogen again and it was at a higher level. And I was consistently ovulating every single month. Wow. Wow. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah, because so for myself, I I have very long cycles um, and I sometimes I will have an ovulation. So I'll have a cycle without ovulating. It's not too common, um, but – my cycles are just long and it takes my body a while to ovulate. So I've been, you know, recently like looking at adrenals and looking at the thyroid and, and kind of taking a step back rather than like only focusing on the sex hormones. It's like, okay, what are the other hormones that impact those hormones? Cause yeah. everything like you understand is, is very like interconnected. Um, but it's very interesting that you take probiotics and like notice the difference because that makes me want to take probiotics <laughs> and try it. Yeah, I took, um, I actually took um, a woman's formulated probiotic. Okay. So it, it may have been because, you know, 
it's not just any probiotic, but I'm actually mm. taking probiotics that are made for women. Do you know the name of it? It is actually, um, I hope I, I think it is. I have a genestra in my head, but it's not because I take genestra pre- prenatal vitamins, which which are amazing. Mm-hmm. But I am not remembering the name right now. And when I do, I promise I will <laughs> I will tell you the name. Perfect. Yeah. I'll get the name from you and then we can put it in the show notes for listeners. It's um, like the tip of my tongue type of thing. Um, get female ones. Yeah. I, I would love to try that because – like I said, like I definitely think there's a correlation between the gut and the hormones like that. Um, and so, I remembered. Yeah. Oh, okay. I remembered. What is I'm it? sorry. Okay. Uh, genuine, genuine health. Genuine health. Cool. Yes. I'm going to write yeah. that down. Awesome. I'm going to try that out. Um, and I'm very interested to see the strains that they use. Like what makes that a female probiotic versus a general probiotic that anybody can take? Yeah, the the topic of probiotics is so interesting to me, and I'm I'm increasing my knowledge on it. But there are different strands that work for different. I'm sure you know this um, aspects of health, mm. and so when they are putting together probiotics, they take those findings in, into consideration. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what do you think is most often misunderstood about optimal health and optimal nutrition? So I actually pretty much covered this, which is not understanding that nutrition takes time Mm -hmm. um, and lifestyle changes take time to take effect. And the reason why is because nutrition has such um, a key role in metabolism that a lot of people don't understand. So sometimes you'll hear uh, medical practitioners or you'll hear people who are very much on the conventional medicine side saying, nutrition won't change your health problem. You know, it's, it has nothing to do with it. And I've heard this from doctors before myself. And so we kind of fall into that mindset of, okay, so it didn't work um, this first month or the second month. So therefore everybody was right. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so the, I think that is one of the biggest misunderstanding misunderstandings about nutrition because Nutrients obviously play a role in cell metabolism, in your energy, in fat metabolism. Um, it's, they t- it takes part of your cell walls and we rely on certain nutrients like essential fatty acids. So I don't even understand how this could still, um, sorry, I, I, we rely on essential fatty acids from food. Mm-hmm. Like our body cannot produce it. So I don't know how the idea that nutrition won't impact your health is still around. It it confuses me, honestly boggles my mind how this could still be a misunderstanding. I'd like to interrupt this podcast to talk to you about Sensate. You've probably seen me talk about them on Instagram lately, um, and I'm finding it very interesting to be using this device regularly throughout the week. It is a device that helps tone the vagus nerve and it does this through sound and vibration. Um, The vagus nerve is really important for keeping you calm, keeping you out of the fight or flight mode, um, and really like just really great for stress management because of how it (laughs) talks to the rest of the body and how it helps everything kind of connect. It's really cool to use a device for something like this compared to a supplement or, you know, breathing techniques or anything like, like that. Like it's, it's cool to try something different and that's exactly what Sensate is. So it tones the vagus nerve through sound and vibration. So you hang it from your neck and you lean back against the couch or you lie down and let it vibrate right on your chest, uh, your chest plate. And that's where you're actually able to tone the vagus nerve and reach it. So it's very interesting and it's cool because you actually feel the difference right away. Um, if you're stressed with work and you take, you know, 10 minutes aside and go and use this, like you'll feel 
calmer within like a couple of minutes. It's really, really cool. Um, and the science behind this company is very, very interesting and is a very growing field. So I'm excited to see that. Um, but yeah, I definitely recommend trying it if you're looking for something that's a different for stress management and for, um, getting into your parasympathetic state more often. And you can definitely go and use it and use my discount code. Please use that. I love getting these for you, for my listeners. Um, my discount code is biohacking Brittany, and you can use that at getsensate.com slash biohacking Brittany. Um, and yeah, definitely try it out. And if you have any feedback or love it and want to talk about it, you can always message me and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find that there's a lot of people who understand that what you eat impacts your health, but there's not a lot of people who understand that you can actually eat a specific way for specific health concerns. Like I remember I was talking to somebody and I was saying like, oh, you can, you can eat, you know, foods that are naturally high in estrogen to help with you know, your cycle in this way or whatever it was. And she was so blown away that you can actually eat like that. And it's not just that food either, you know, makes you gain weight or lose weight in like the simplistic way that people kind of see it. It's like, no, like food can actually be like medicine and, exactly. and, and support different systems in the body and, and organs in the body. And like, she was blown away. She's like, I had no idea that people actually ate specific foods for certain things. And I was like, what do you mean? How did you not know that? <laughs> yeah, right. It's very like common sense to, uh, sense to us. Like we know yeah. that if, this is going to take time. It's not going to be overnight. But especially in the fertility world, mm. you know how it, I mean, us as women, we just wait for that first pregnancy test and then we just can't wait for the next one, right? Mm. We just constantly, it's like we need to constantly check the way we check social media. Um, and so mm-hmm. when you're dealing with clients who are on a fertility journey, there's so much emotion behind it and yeah. so much of that influence of it, this needs to work right away. So I'd rather go and take ovulation supplements or sorry, um, medication. Mm. And I know this is going to work because there's active ingredients in it. Right, right. So yeah. for the, the ovulation medication, what... What is in that specifically? Do you know? I actually don't know what's in it, but I remember reading something about um, miscarriages and just yeah. really scary stuff. I yeah. I didn't go too much into it. I just remember reading like just the first few um, side effects and I was like, I just, no, I, I can't do it. I can't. Yeah. I want my body, like I was so tired of being on birth control and realizing I didn't deal with the root problem Mm. that I was like, I cannot do that to myself again. Because you know what, if I find I I get pregnant and then you know what, my hormones are not actually balanced. So then I end up losing that, you know, that Mm -hmm. pregnancy because my hormone, I didn't address the root problem. Mm -hmm. So that was the way my mind was working. Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Have you have you tried um, bioidentical hormones or do you ever recommend those to your clients? No, I actually have not gotten into that. But mm-hmm. I was recommended some um, from the Holistic MD that mm-hmm. I saw. But again, I just really wanted to get my body making those hormones. Yeah, yeah. I, I find bioidentical hormones – very interesting. Um, you can get them for your thyroid too. You can get them for your sex hormones. You can get them for a bunch of different things. Um, but I went on a short stint of them last year. I think I did progesterone for two weeks and then it helped with my cycle and then I had a period. Um, but what I found my concern with bioidentical hormones is that, is this not just like taking birth control in the sense of like, I'm popping a pill to, you know, suppress something from happening or create something to happen rather than looking at the root cause and figuring out like why I'm not ovulating in the first place. Yeah. That's exactly my train of thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's hard though. Like, you know, like I know some people who are on bioidentical thyroid hormone, and they've been on it for years and they feel like fantastic. 
and That's and interesting. yeah, and and they say like, well, it's either this or something more extreme, like more you know aggressive medication. So I kind of get the I kind of get both sides of the argument. Um, I think it depends what you want to use it for. Yeah, I mean, um, there are some people who try holistically to heal their thyroid, and doesn't matter what they do, it it doesn't work. So I totally understand that side as well. Yeah. So what are like some of the com- the common health problems that you see in your practice? So somehow these are the conditions that like always come to me. They just find their way to me. And that is um, PCOS, mm. high cholesterol with couples with blood pressure. That one I, for some reason, have seen the most of. And um, digestive disturbances, blood sugar imbalances, and endocrine disruptions and um, adrenal health concerns. So I believe that all of these have very similar root causes. Hmm. Um, And those are insufficient antioxidant status, low dietary fiber, a high intake of refined carbohydrates and saturated fats, a lack of essential minerals, dehydration, and a lack of important amino acids. and also low essential fatty acids. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) In terms of a root cause, that's like a lot of nutrient imbalances that you're talking about. Um, That's so interesting that you are like attracting these people who have, it's all kind of like hormonal based in one way or another, Um, like PCOS and, and cholesterol and also you know, blood sugar imbalances, like that one's huge, but it it makes sense, right? Because if you look at the standard thing that somebody, a Canadian, a U.S. citizen, whatever, is eating, it's not going to be high in these antioxidants that we need or low in refined carbohydrates. It's completely flipped, right? It's just refined food, if you can even call it food. Um, And then it leads, over the years, it leads to gut health problems, which leads to hormonal problems. And it kind of just cascades at that point. Yeah. Do you know anything about leaky gut actually? Because that's a topic that I do want to expand on and I don't feel like I do know much about it. Yeah, I do actually. Um, (laughs) It's funny you asked that because leaky gut was my thing that I had, you know, the, the issue that I had when I was 16. Like I found out that was the underlying issue for a lot of my symptoms I was dealing with. So yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, But it's crazy like how all of these, I always think to myself, like all of these um, health concerns, like common ones that we're seeing today, it all leads back to the same dietary um, insufficiencies, you know? So I somehow get these um, specific conditions coming back to me and then I always respond to them the same way because I know what they're they're missing. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And so you ask your clients to do testing then of, of mineral status uh, and the different proteins and everything that you just said. I do. I always ask for um, certain tests to be done and I know it can be difficult sometimes for them to uh, get their doctor to do it but I insist on getting them done. And then from there, I make my decisions. Yeah. Do you know the names of the tests? Because I think listeners are definitely going to be keen to check them out. Yeah. So I always ask for, um, in in terms of like, I don't know like specific names of tests, but Mm -hmm. in terms of nutrients that I ask for, I ask for um, B vitamins to be checked. I ask for magnesium to be checked. I ask for vitamin D to be checked. And... Um, I asked for iron mm-hmm. and cholesterol. Those are the ones that I asked for the most to get an understanding of where they're at. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I recently did a blood panel in March and I actually have another one coming up with the same company next week. Um, it's going to be interesting to see the difference in my results, but they test for everything that you just listed. Um, and my iron was actually, it wasn't super low, but it was like low in the normal range. 
Um, and it's kind of been on my radar for the last few years when I get like my ferritin checked and I've just recently started taking iron because my energy has been so low, like seriously so low. Um, and it's, I think it's helping, but I'm not quite sure. So I'm interested when I'm going to get tested again to see if like my iron stores have increased at all. And what, what sort of iron do you use? Um, I'd have to grab it. Um, I know it's the right one because it doesn't cause any digestive upset for me. So I don't get constipation or loose stools or an upset stomach, which a lot of people do when they take iron. So but, is it heme, is it heme iron or is it, um, yeah, I, okay. I think it is. Let me look it up. It's by, um, Lorna Van, Van der Haag. Oh, gosh, how do you say her name? Um, and I really, really love her supplements and I actually recommend them a lot to people because they're just very, like they're great and they work very well. Okay. Here it is. Let me see. So it's elemental iron, 15 milligrams. Um, it's got folate in it. It's got vitamin B2 in it. Um, yeah. And the type of iron, it says iron, it's got like letter three and then pyrophosphate, pyrophosphate. Interesting. Um, yeah. And it says, I need to look this up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't say anything about heme or not heme. I'd have to like read further onto it. Um, but I really, I do feel so much, somewhat better for it. Is there a spe- specific type of iron that you like to recommend to your clients? So I do recommend, if they're not vegan, I recommend team iron just because it's better absorbed. And then when it is not, then I recommend, uh, like if it's non heme iron, then I recommend taking it with vitamin C for better absorption. I'd like to interrupt this podcast today to talk to you about Inside Tracker. So the truth is that people age at different speeds the date that marks your birthday doesn't necessarily reflect your body's biological age or known as your inner age with Inside Tracker. Learning your biological age can definitely seem daunting at first, and I felt the same way when I did this test, but it's more than just a simple measurement. It's a starting point for you to take control of your health and wellness journey. Inside Tracker is a personalized nutrition platform that analyzes your blood, DNA, lifestyle, and now fitness trackers to help you optimize your performance from the inside out. First, they analyze your body's biomarker data to offer you a clear picture of what's going on inside. Then they provide science-backed recommendations for positive diet and lifestyle changes and track your progress every step of the way. If you're interested in this, definitely check it out. I'm so, so happy I did it. I learned a lot about what's going on for me. You can use my discount code biohackingbrittany through the link in the show notes, and that will get you 25% off both testing your biological age and any of the other tests and products as well. So that's biohackingbrittany for 25% off. You know, getting, getting yourself tested is so important because like otherwise you don't know what's going on. Like you're just kind of going off of intuition or like your symptoms, which can be helpful. But like when you have the data, it's like, okay, this is what's going on at like at the micro level and we can actually test for this and yes. heal. And you don't want to be going on, you know, a supplement that you are, you, your levels are fine because there are like, for example, iron, it can become, um, toxic if in high amounts and cause yeah. side effects. So that's why it's super important to get your blood work done and understand where your body's at so that you don't um, make a mistake of actually causing more harm than good. Yes. Yeah, definitely. I, I have done that. <laughs> Been taking supplements. We, yeah. I yeah. haven't <laughs> needed them. Yeah. We've all done it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like when I, when I did this panel in March, it said my vitamin D was like way too high and my vitamin B12 was way too high, like way out of the range. And I was oh. like, oh, okay. I actually am taking a lot of that. So <laughs> maybe I should stop for a couple of months. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
like, I don't know. I mean, I get this question very often, so I'm assuming you do as well as a nutritionist, but if someone comes to you and they say like, Hey, I want to start eating healthier or like, I'm trying this new diet or, you know, kind of those conversations that come up naturally when you tell somebody you're a nutritionist, like, where do you point people to start? Like, where do, where do, yeah, what's the next step or the first step for a lot of people? So I've had so many clients who I just explain to them, um, or just people who are interested in seeing me, like you said, uh, I just explained to them that you can't start off right away with a sudden shift in all your meals, having all this fiber or all these salads, because your body sort of goes into a shock and you might have digestive troubles. You might experience excessive gas and, you know, get fed up with the whole healthy eating thing because you don't like the symptoms and it feels uncomfortable. Um, so what I say is just to give you an example of, um, a way that I get small, subtle changes into their diet is starting off with like two tablespoons of flaxseed on your rice or on your toast in the morning on top of peanut butter. And then, um, you know, like a week later, increase that to making a whole grain toast or whole grain rice and have that flaxseed as well. So their body's getting used to the fiber. So just taking baby steps is one way that I um, help people start eating healthier. The next is I have like this list of um, like sort of like checkmark points where it makes it so easy to understand whether your plate is healthy or not. And I'm just going to go through this list. So it's, did I get a variety of plants in my diet this week with varying colors? Did I make sure I was well hydrated today and um, not rely on thirst to dictate that action? And mm. um, there are water intake calculators online that you can find that actually determine that from your um, body weight and your physical activity. And um, did I make sure I took the daily recommended um, fiber amounts that I need for um for my body type and did I include a source of essential fatty acids like fish or nuts into my diet since my body relies on EFAs from food and they're also needed for fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D. So these are just like very simple ways that I test out um, like my meals to determine whether they're healthy enough for me or I just think that it's a very easy way to get started with healthy eating and not make it too complicated because at the end of the day, healthy eating does seem very complicated to most people, but it's really simple. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. Um, it's so interesting that you place a lot of emphasis on fiber um, mm -hmm. because for myself, I, I naturally don't, but now this makes me think of makes me think of that. So, um, do you have specific sources of fiber that you love and that you typically recommend? I love whole grains, even though people are not into grains when it comes to fiber very much, like in the health mm. industry. But I think whole grains are perfect for digestion. If you want to go gluten free, that's fine. But I think they're so important for digestion in terms of feeding the microbiome and having a healthy gut flora and hormone health as well. And they also have some sources have EFAs in them as well. So I think grains are one of the best choices. After that, I am a big fan of flax seeds, chia seeds, and quinoa mm. um, for fiber and complex carbohydrates. I yeah. think those fibers mm. are should be valued more. Because mm -hmm. we rely on, I mean, all of our grains are pretty much refined, right? So incorporating those into your diet really makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. Like I, I personally don't eat a lot of grains myself, but um, we'll have like quinoa, which is like a pseudo grain, technically like a seed, but... Um, or like rice every now and then, that type of thing. Um, I've always, 
like I've, I've had flaxseed before, um, but I know it's like naturally high in phytoestrogen. So I've always kind of been like careful with that in terms of like how taking that type of thing daily would impact my hormones. I don't know if you have any experience with that, but I've always thought about that. Yeah. So a lot of people have this, um, idea that if they are eating, um, foods that like affect estrogen, like soy and flax mm. seeds, it's actually been studied quite often and found that it doesn't impact hormones the way that people are thinking. It doesn't increase your your estrogen in that hmm. sense in an unhealthy way. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting because a lot of people, especially with soy, that's like a big concern is like yeah. it's, it's very common to hear that narrative. Um, but but yeah, maybe maybe it's actually not as big of a difference as, as people might think. Um, is there anything that you, you know, specifically don't love or you disagree with that's in the nutrition industry or diet culture, uh, right now? Yeah. So, and I'm hearing this from like a lot of health practitioners in the health industry on social media all over. Um, and that is shaming for particular diets. Mm. Um, and specifically anything to do with weight loss. Mm. So there could be a ancient, very traditional, holistic um, lifestyle strategy or um, natural medicine strategy that people have been using for centuries. And it will be classified as diet culture or just mm. a part of diet culture. And then it gets a bad rap. And then what happens is it sort of gets disqualified and looked at in a negative light. So right. for example, fasting um, is one of them that mm -hmm. has been quite controversial. Um, for myself, I do this for religious reasons as well. So I don't just understand it from a weight loss perspective, but I understand it through a spiritual perspective of just a purification process. So when I read the science on how it could create you know, a state of equilibrium in the body and reset the body and reset digestion and give your body that break that it needs in your liver and your kidneys that break that it needs to detoxify. Um, when I read about that, I really understand the whole purification part of it. And so just to hear it simplified as only fa like only fasting for weight loss, mm -hmm. I understand where it's coming from because of you know, the prevalence of eating disorders and only practicing it for weight loss. But the way that it's being, um, the way that it's being handled currently is that it is being called pretty much bull, you know? So, mm -hmm. and I, I'm finding that that's something that is bothering me in, in the health um, industry that we're in. And I think that there needs to be a lot of education about what it's really about because there are studies proving that diabetics benefit from it, mm -hmm. um, that it's really great for heart health, that it's amazing for, um, obesity and those sort of, um, common like conditions we see today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I, I can definitely see that and agree with you. Like, I think it can get scrutinized, um, and I, I think we see that just in general with like most things, like even like keto or eating high fat or vegan or whatever it is, like people start to criticize and it's taken too far and it's kind of the whole concept itself is lost. Um, and maybe there's a time and place for every diet and way of eating. And maybe it's correct for the certain like specific type of person. So I, I think fasting is very interesting because it's used in so many different cultures for so long. So it's quite different from something like veganism um, because it's got that like cultural aspect to it, like you mentioned. Um, but fasting can be amazing. Like a lot of people get fantastic results from it. Um, so it, I think it just depends, depends on who's using it and, and that they're not overusing it as well. Yes, exactly. And we are all so unique and so different and different things work for different metabolism. And 
So I think understanding that there's not a one size fits all solution Mm -hmm. for, for like everyone is, is really important. Yeah. I think we're moving towards that though, like personalized health, individual health, uh, healthcare, healthcare practitioners, um, diets, plans, all of it. Like it's less like, Hey, everyone should be eating this way. And it's more like, let's get you tested and look at your lifestyle and see what fits you perfectly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the other thing with that too is like what fits you right now might not work for you in 10 years or in two years, right? Like we change so much as human beings, our circumstances change. So it's only fair that our diet and our lifestyle and the the biohacks that we choose to do change in accordance as well. Exactly. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you're excited about right now or looking forward to? Um, like in terms of yeah, in term- moving. Yeah, your moving. business or your personal life or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, I am thinking about putting together um, a fertility program where I Ooh. prep, uh, help prep women um, and, and men as well to be in their best nutritional state for the first trimester, Mm -hmm. um, but then also continue that throughout the second trimester and third trimester because every trimester has different um, nutrients that are more important during that time. Mm -hmm. And so I've been been thinking about putting together a program like that, but there's still a lot of work (laughs) to come and a lot of research. Cool, That, that is so needed right now. Um, so many people need support on their fertility journeys and like pregnancy journeys. Um, and it's kind of overwhelming too, because there's so many books out there and different, you know, avenues of information and contradictory as well, right. Of like what you should be doing. So I think that would be really, really cool. Yeah. And I don't think there's much out there about it. Like I know there are some books, but I don't Mm. think there's actual programs that are specified, um, towards that and like knowing exactly what nutrients you need for each trimester. So like, just to give you an example, like calcium is so important in the third trimester and, um, B vitamins and folic acid are really important in the first trimester Yeah, as well as uh, essential fatty acids and vitamin D. I can't go on forever, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. there's, you know, like not a lot of people have this information. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I know. And, and people need to become more aware of it and and learn. Um, okay. So where can people find you and how can they connect with you? Yeah. So I am most (laughs) available through nutrition, nutrition blooms at nutrition blooms on Instagram. Um, I have my, uh, blog post, uh, blog posts as well. It's not really like a website, but it's more of like a a blog posting site, um, which I'm, I'm working on and hopefully I will have, um, more up on there soon. And you can also find me on Facebook and nutrition blooms and Twitter and TikTok. (laughs) All right. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. I love the photos that you post of food. Like your food photography is unreal. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's it's seriously a passion of mine. And I always, every time I put together my food styling and my recipes, I just, I use that passion that I have for art to make it look appetizing because I want people to think of healthy food as delicious. Like that's the food I want. I don't care about the fast food. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It gives me that passion and motivation to keep pushing forward with it. Good. Good. Um, Great. So I'm going to like link all of that in the show notes so people can find you um, and then connect with you if they want to work with you or check out your beautiful photos of your food. Thank you so much, Brittany. I appreciate all of this and having this conversation with you. And I just, I can't believe how similar we are. And I think we uh, connected for a reason. (laughs) Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you, Brittany.
Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, feel free to screenshot this episode and tag me if you'd like me to respond. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you have a question about your health, my DMs are always open and I'm currently taking new clients. Thanks and see you next time.